Michael Feathers defined legacy code as code that doesn't have tests, because with tests, you can change the code without breaking it. But unfortunately, there's a lot of code out there that doesn't have tests and doesn't have a design with easily testable units either. So in his book, Working Effectively with Legacy Code, Feathers outlines several dependency breaking techniques as a way out of exactly this situation. So today we're going to look at one of those, Adapt Parameter. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. So when you don't have any tests for your code, you need to be pretty careful not to break it when you change it. I mean, I think everyone would like to have good, reliable, fast tests for their code, but especially with legacy code, it can be quite a struggle to get them in place. Although having said that, with modern refactoring tools, there is actually quite a lot you can do safely, even without the backup of having tests, if you know how to use these tools well. Dependency breaking techniques are a particular kind of refactoring, a subset of all of them, and they're designed just to allow you to create these testable units within otherwise difficult code. I mean, just like with any other refactoring, the best approach is taking small, safe steps and looking for feedback about whether you've broken anything often. But of course, for a dependency breaking technique, you don't have any fast unit tests at the time. So the feedback that you get is usually from a compiler or a linter. The other main difference between a dependency breaking technique and a normal refactoring is that design doesn't necessarily look better afterwards. You're sticking to very conservative changes with the primary goal of getting some unit tests in place. And once you've got those tests, then you can work on improving the design properly. The technique I want to show you today is called Adapt Parameter. I've got a demo coming up using C Sharp and Rider. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, I expect you're starting to pick up some of my ideas about refactoring and test design and technical coaching. But you should bear in mind there's only so much you can learn from watching videos like these. If you're going to develop real skill yourself, you're going to need some hands-on practice. I have a training program called Fundamentals of Software Craft, which is designed for professional software developers to do together with their teams to develop coding skills and expertise with unit testing and refactoring and software design at the lowest level. For more information, do check out my website. This is the Diagram Printer Refactoring Carter, little exercise that I set up. It's got quite a few different classes, so you need to find the place to start, the Diagram Printer class. I've just folded up the code to make it clear um, so I can show you it a bit at a time. Basically, you've got um, some constants, two public methods and a private method. And what I'm going to show you now is, is getting this method under test, print summary. So if I expand that, you can see this, this method has got um, a guard clause. We're checking if the diagram is null, in which case we set the text to, to empty string and return false. Alternatively, we uh, construct this summary, we add some stuff to it, we turn it into a, a text that we assign and return true. Now, this is some code I'd like to get under test, and I've already actually written a test for it, and the, uh, the test is passing. So if I just go over to the test case, you can see here, it's basically just checking when I pass null that I get back that false result and that empty output. So the, uh, the test is really only covering this small part of the code. This part is not yet covered. I want to write that test. But for the test this part, I need this diagram here not to be null. If I go and uh, look at the flowtrap diagram class, this is this is not real code. This is a stub. Um, this is me trying to simulate in this exercise this the idea that this class can't be constructed in a unit test framework. Um, here I'm just throwing exceptions, whatever you do to it. But um, for real, this class would you know have a database or a network or something backing it up that meant that you couldn't construct one. And this is a problem that I, I find in, in various legacy codes uh, semi-regularly, and uh, you need good strategies to deal with this. How can I test this bit of code if I can't construct one of these in my tests? Well, there are many ways to do this, and the particular dependency breaking technique I want to show you today is adapt parameter. The first step of this refactoring is to create a new wrapper or adapter class for the untestable flowchart diagram. 
So just here at the start of the method, I'm going to imagine that I'm, I'm going to create a new variable, wrapped diagram. Um, and I'm going to imagine that I've got a class called diagram wrapper, and I pass that uh, untestable class as an argument to it. So then I can use my tools to create that class. And instead of throwing an exception in the constructor, I'm just going to make uh, a property to put that um, flowchart diagram in, the thing that I can't test. So this is a, an adapter class for that, and I'm just going to move it to its own file as well. So, uh, so now I've got this new instance of a diagram wrapper, and that change should have been relatively safe. I just created a new class. I didn't change any existing code. But the next step then is that now I've, I've created a, a new home for this uh, difficult to test class. All the places that I'm using it, I want to use it through my wrapper. So uh, like, for example, here where I'm calling diagram.name, I can just call wrapped diagram.diagram.name. So I unwrap it again, I get it out of the adapter and then call this method on it. That should be a relatively safe thing to do. And I'm going to do that actually in all of the places that I access diagram in this section of code. I'm using the search and replace tool just to make sure I didn't miss any. Um, and again, this is a relatively safe change. I'm, I'm, you know, all I've done is, is put the thing into a wrapper and then I'm getting it out again every time I use it. So that's the first stage. Wrap it and then access it through the wrapper. The next stage then is to try and create a method that could eventually be testable. So I'm going to extract this part of the code as a method. I, I could include this as well, but it's just a null check and I'm not too worried about testing that part. This is the part I want to test. So let me extract a method for that. Um, and let's just put this so you can see it all on the screen at the same time. So it's suggesting a method signature uh, with three arguments. And I'm just going to move this one up to the start. So it's more obvious that the three arguments are the same as the ones for the original method. Um, except I've swapped that untestable class for a adapter. So that's the, the part of the adapt parameter. I've, I've now got an adapter wrapping that parameter. And I'm going to name this print summary. And I'm not going to make it static. This is going to be an overloaded version of that original method. I'm also going to make it public so that my, I can access it from my tests. Because this is what I'm hoping is going to be a testable method in a minute. It's still not testable at the moment because in order to get a diagram wrapper at the moment, I still need one of those untestable classes to pass to its constructor. So uh, in a minute, I'm going to um, do a bit more to it, but I want this to actually be a, an interface instead of a concrete class. But at the moment, that interface has only a constructor and a property and a property that gives back a type that I don't want. So let me just show you that again. This is this is the property it's, and it's that untestable thing. So I need to um, extend this wrapper to hide more so that I can um, make a testable interface. And the way I'm going to do that is, is quite uh, systematic. And I'm again, I haven't got tests for this code, so I need to do this in a really safe way. So for each place where I'm accessing a method on the untestable class, like, like here when I access the name, I create a new method um, and name, that's a good enough name for it. I'm going to make this static uh, because I want to be able to move it to the other class. So there we are. I've got my new static method. Extract methods are relatively safe refactoring. I'm going to follow it up by, with another uh, relatively safe refactoring. Um, let me just check the tests are okay, even though they're not really covering this. The the thing I want to do now is make this method non-static. And at that point, it asks me, well, what do you want it to be an instance method on? And I want it to be an instance method on my wrapper, um, which has the effect of also moving it there. So now I've got this name method here that uh, just delegates the call onto the, the wrapped class. So that's basically what I want to do on all of these. So I'll show you it again. Extract the method. Serial number seems like a good enough name. Then I want to move that. Or I want to make it non-static, actually, uh, which has the effect of moving it to the thing you make it not static on. And I can do that for this as well. 
just to get a little bit of practice at doing this more than once. Uh, that and then move it to the diagram wrapper. And there's one more here. Flowchart thumbnail, that seems all right. And then I need to move that as well. So now this is looking a little bit more hopeful. If I go over to my diagram wrapper now, it's gained several methods. I've got uh, four methods, each of which just delegates to the underlying wrapped class. And uh, that's, that's great. And uh, this code uh, still does the same as before in the production code. But now, of course, I have the opportunity to introduce an interface that I can um, replace with a test double or a mock in my tests. So that's a, another refactoring, extract interface. I diagram wrapper. Mm, that's not such a good name for an interface. Um, so uh, it's a summarizable diagram, I guess, because all of these methods are needed in the uh, print summary method. So uh, I summarizable diagram and we want all the public methods except for that one. We don't want to expose the wrapped thing uh, because our tests can't get us one of those. And actually we shouldn't need it because we've, uh, all of these methods are the ones that are being used. So now I've got a new interface. Um, let's just go and have a little look at that one. Yeah, it's here, it's got these four methods. And actually what I've got here in print summary, I should be able to use on one of those instead. And that should all compile still. Yes. So the, 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 the code all compiles and now I've got a method with a signature where I can actually test this. So what I need to do in my test case now is um, create a test double to replace uh, this um, argument and then I can check this summary text. So uh, I'm not going to show you that part. I think you can work that out. See if you uh, have a go at this yourself, see if you can then uh, do this refactoring, adapt the parameter. You end up with this new parameter with an interface that you can replace in the test. And then if you are successful with that one, you could try this other public method that I've got here. It's got a few more challenges to it. So, uh, but this technique I think works pretty well. As I said, it's not the only way to get this, uh, this code under test, but I think this is quite a neat way and it's a useful technique that you should have in your toolbox. I hope you can see the potential of this dependency breaking technique for making your code more testable. The adapter pattern, which I've used here, has a lot of other uses and learning the mechanics of creating an adapter class is very useful. Watch out for more on that in future sessions. If you'd like to find out more about technical coaching and the Saman method, which I use, do head over to the Saman Society website, sign up for one of our free events, Members of my Patreon also get access to additional resources, so you might want to check out that too. In the meantime, I wish you the best of luck using the adapter pattern and this dependency breaking technique to get control of your legacy code. Happy coding!